live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Linux Foundation, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching Silicon Angle Media's flagship production of theCUBE. We're here at CloudNativeCon and KubeCon here in Austin, Texas. Happy to welcome back to the program, program a many time alum, Tom Joyce, who is now the CEO of Penta. Tom, great to see you. Great to see you too. All right, so, so Tom, we've had you on so many different ecosystems, so many different waves of technology. Talk about, you know, Penta, how it fits into this whole cloud native space that we're looking at at this show. Okay, great, yeah, like you said, you and I, uh, we've known each other a long time. We've seen a lot of revolutions uh, in technology and you know, we're in the middle of a number of them right now, and at this event you've got the cloud native folks and you've got the folks that are uh, tackling containers and Kubernetes orchestration, and uh, you know, it's interesting, this crowd here is so young and so creative, and the, the last few days I was at the Gartner Data Center Infrastructure Show, and- Not so young there? Not so young, <laughs> but the same problems, yeah. right? Two different communities trying to solve the same problems, which are how do we deal with insane complexity how do we deal with a, an environment that's now not just you know, three public clouds and some hybrid clouds, but a growing list of specialty clouds? How do we manage all of that? And what Pensa is trying to do is be a part of solving that problem uh, using intelligent automation technology, uh, especially in managing the, the underlay complexity, the, um, the infrastructure layer. And it's kind of funny, um, we're, we've gone through a period of time when the whole discussion has been, hey, containers are going to be a panacea, and, and yeah, infrastructure doesn't matter, and <laughs> infrastructure is going away, and I think there, there is some truth to how that is evolving, but it, it, it still matters, especially when you get down to having to deliver services yeah, to no, customers, no. right? Tom, first of all, I mean, Dan Cohn got on stage, you know, from the CNCF, and he said, uh, it is exciting time for boring infrastructure. Yeah. That maybe maybe too exciting. Yeah. I love that line because it's great. every wave comes out, it was like, Tom, you remember, virtualization, oh, I'm not going to have to worry about I'm things not like to networking worry about it anymore. and storage. And oh. it's been the biggest revolution and it's the biggest we wave spent of infrastructure a decade ever. fixing that. Yep. Containers came out, oh, once again, we're going to abstract it away and it's going to take that. Yep. So, what do you see as that role uh, between you know, the infrastructure layer and you know, that, that cloud native? What are the big challenges? What are your customers seeing? And, and how's Penta actually helping to fix? Well, I think what yeah. we're seeing, in my opinion, is we're going from operations running everything to DevOps to, you know, now they're starting to talk about no ops. You know, how do we get to a point uh, where... We might argue over the, the, the terminology, because yeah. we need ops, obviously. Here's what I think. Yeah. I think it's going to be less ops and more architecture. Yeah. I think the challenge becomes around how do you do the design, how do you architect these systems so that they will work and not fail. And it's a lot like, you know, one metaphor I heard somebody use that I'm going to steal is, we went from, in, in drafting, we went from drafting on a sketch pad, to using CAD technology, to using 3D CAD technology, to automated CAD technology, to now service providing it, right? And what happened? Everybody got smarter about architecture being the important part, not the actual physical plugging together. I think the role of the architect in a cloud native environment, in a Kubernetes environment, in a VM environment is frankly more important than ever. Somebody needs to know how the tools work to make sure that the service levels actually deliver. Um, you know, I have sat in a lot of these meetings where people say, look, just, put your old app in a container and you don't have to, you can run it anywhere, it'll be fine. And it's just, somebody needs to think about the architecture and we want to provide intelligent technology that helps them do that, like AutoCAD and like some of these things that came along in that ecosystem. Yeah, well one of the things I've been poking at, you know, most of this year and coming into the show especially, is people say, oh, well, it's too complicated. And the response really is, well, apologies, it's never going to get simple. Yeah. Um, what we need is, I need proper tooling, things like automation to be able to help because humans alone will not be able to fix that. I really need to have the combination of the tooling, proper architecture yeah. as you said. What, what, what are you seeing and you know, how, how's that playing out in customer environments? Well, I think what we're seeing is uh, folks figuring out that you know, number one, it's cross domain and cross cloud. So whatever you design needs to work in multiple different environments that are going to end up having different capabilities. Um, and, and, and nobody really has deep expertise in everything about networking, everything about containers, everything about uh, compute and storage, but all those things still matter. So 
what folks are asking for is a layer of technology that kind of arbitrates between the underlying infrastructure and the upper level applications that they're actually trying to deliver. And that's where this automation layer that's emerging comes in. And part of that's orchestration, and part of it's what we do. And what we're focusing on is design, validate complex designs, build them and deploy them uh, using tools that help people do that a lot faster and get it right every time you know, so mistakes don't, don't, don't transpire. Yeah, Tom, I, I, I want you to help explain to our audience this whole SDN wave kind of, it played out. And sure, you know, VMware NSX and Cisco ACI, they're doing okay, but for a lot of the industry, uh, SDN equals, equals still does nothing, um, <laughs> yet networking, critically important, heavily involved in kind of the, both the container and all this cloud native discussion. Why now is, you know, how are we fixing networking? How is it, you know, being set up for this type of uh, environment versus you know, what we were trying to do with SDN. Yeah, I think it's a good point. I think you've got SDN in the enterprise and you also have uh, network functions virtualization in the service providers and often overlook that in the enterprise you're going through cloud native and DevOps transitions and, and service providers going through a revolution of their own from becoming, going from being telcos to becoming digital service providers. And uh, the problems are similar, the technologies are different. You know, I think what, my observation is this, is the hype cycle's real. You know, we've gone through five years of talking about SDN, talking about OpenStack, talking about network functions virtualization, and all of a sudden now, uh, what I've seen in this job is that uh, there's real money getting spent and the technology's being used. NSX is being used in a whole variety of ways that people didn't anticipate. And we're seeing in every one of these service providers, whether they're classic telcos, they're wired, or they're wireless, or they're cloud, they're investing in technologies to rev revolutionize how the core of that network works and how the edge network works. I think the first signs of that are really NSX and SD-WAN. SD-WAN has now gone mainstream because customers have seen that there's a real use case for it. That's kind of your first broadly applicable network function. And I think though the next couple of years, there will be one after another. Those problems are going to get knocked down. And so, it, frankly, in our business, we started focusing on a lot of these enterprise problems with NSX and you know, vSAN and software-defined data center technologies around VMware. We're working on containers. But frankly, the biggest area of growth for us is probably going to be these large service providers. You know, it's like a trillion dollar business and it's going to be revolutionized over five years. So we're getting involved in a lot of these network functions, virtualization conversations. And so yeah, I wouldn't say does nothing. It does a lot, but getting there, it's been really hard technology to figure out. Yeah, uh, right, it's kind of, the, it, it took a little bit while to mature. Uh, the other thing, you, you've got some strong background on, uh, look at kind of the, the, the manager, management and monitoring uh, in this type of environment. Um, what, what's new, how does that change in the networking space when we have it's all microservices and all these various pieces there? Um, you, you know, what, what are you seeing there? Yeah, you know, the short answer is, <laughs> I have a little bit of a, rebel, um, a controversial view on that. It's not unique, but I yeah, think- John Furrier would say, we love controversy here on okay. theCUBE. I think so. monitoring goes away. Monitoring the way it's been done for the last 30 years goes away. And I think, you know, when we had mainframes, we had client server, we had internet, and now we have the set of technologies we're working with in virtualization. Every time that transition has happened, there's been a whole bunch of monitoring companies. But I think classic monitoring is eventually going to go away. Ultimately, there is a lot of complexity, and the machine needs to manage it, right? The machine's going to need to manage it. So the eyeballs watching the problem and remediating it to a greater and greater extent are going to be automation technologies versus throwing up more and more alerts in front of a human that says, I'm just going to turn them off because I don't know what this means. So I think uh, automation technologies are going to replace classic monitoring. And, and again, you go around this event here, the folks that are doing cloud native, they don't want to have a bunch of monitoring alerts. They're not going to, they're not going to tolerate that. They just want to deliver an application service. They don't want to deal with operations, they don't want to deal with monitoring, they don't want to deal with problems, they want the problems to take care of themselves. That's hard, but I think that's coming. Yeah, uh, Tom, uh, you know, the end users, whether it be enterprise, service providers, there's a lot of technology out there, there's a lot of things uh, happening out there, you know, when do they, you know, know to call Pensa? You know, what, what, give us kind of, you know, some of some of the big value prop uh, that that they should be looking at. Say, oh, hey, 
you know, yes, that, that makes sense to me. I, I need yeah. to give you guys a I mean, call. I can boil it down very simply. We deal with two kinds of people, and they're really the architects. So you think about that CAD analogy. We're dealing with people that are doing complex designs in two areas. One is typically software-defined data center. So people that are bringing all of these technologies together and need to deliver a working system, maybe a really complex proof of concept or you know, big systems where they're using VMware uh, as an example. So we help them get that job done, do it fast. That's what the automation systems we provide do. The other is in large scale service providers, folks that are dealing with onboarding VNFs, building complex networks, and have been grappling with that, you know, with OpenStack and some of these early technologies for a number of years. We have a revolutionary way to onboard those VNFs, validate designs, deliver designs, uh, and do it in a way that integrates with all the open source technologies people are using. So, to be honest with you, I don't know which of those is going to be more important to us, but they're two big areas and our, our technology applies to both. Yeah, Tom, you've been CEO at a couple of companies now. I want to get your viewpoint just being a CEO for a startup in, in today's landscape, what's it like, what advice do you give your peers? <laughs> uh, you know, when, when you guys are grabbing a drink uh, at, at the bar, you know, what, what are some of the kind of biggest challenges and biggest We're things that excite you? We're too tired to grab a drink at the bar. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that um, I love this. Yeah. Uh, it is a great mental challenge because, um, again, I've been like you, I've been doing this for over 30 years and uh, it forces you to learn and learn and learn and question what you know. And uh, that's why I really like the opportunity to engage with um, the leading edge of technology. You know, frankly, all the folks here uh, are young and creative, and it's forced me to become better at what I do. There are a lot more unknowns than working for a big company. With a big company, a lot of what you have to do is laid out before you. In this job, I have to constantly force myself to question what I know, to listen to the customer, uh, to learn new things, and you know, it can be tiring, but it's, you know, it's a good kind of tiring. All right, last question I have for you. What are you most proud, what you've done since you've joined Pensa, and give us a little bit of outlook 2018 for those that are watching. What should we be looking for, kind of milestone deliverables or, or, or other uh, items? Yeah, you know, I think uh, what I'm most proud of is, I mean, this sounds like a, a, you know, a, a silly statement, but I'm, I'm proud of what the team has accomplished. Uh, I didn't do anything, right? I don't write the code. Okay, we have uh, a bunch of engineers uh, that are actually delivering, uh, delivering the product. I think we've been really uh, fortunate uh, to keep all those people and get them focused on some big problems. Um, you know, I'm proud of delivering Pencil Lab to market. I'm proud of the customers we've signed up since we launched that just at the beginning of October. Uh, I'm proud of what we're doing with Nokia on large scale networking uh, in the NFB area. And uh, frankly, I'm proud of the, the ability of this team to, to constantly um, engage and learn and try new things and take risks and screw up and try again. So, you know, it's that whole experience. You know, it's, it's good to work with good people that you like. All right, in 2018? Yeah, 2018 I think is going to be um, surprising for the people in terms of kind of the re-emergence of OpenStack. I think OpenStack is coming back. D don't let them hear that, Tom. They're, 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 the wolves will come out. <laughs> Why? Well, because I think it's reaching at a point where um, the economics of certain kinds of cloud models and frankly the economics of, uh, of VMware are forcing people to reconsider, but it's especially around digital service providers. You know, these large companies have been grappling with how do we revolutionize our core networks for, for five years dealing with OpenStack, and they kind of got a lot of this stuff to work now. I think th that is another sort of controversial statement. You know, when I got into this job, I was like, yeah, OpenStack is dead. I was involved with Helion at Hewlett Packard, and I was like, that's never coming back. Well, guess what, it's coming back. I think the other thing is uh, we're going to see a lot more money being spent on revolutionizing the core networks in these telcos and digital service providers. That, that's what I think the big thing is. Yeah, well, be. absolutely. We've been at the OpenStack show for many years. Uh, the networking component, especially for the telco and service providers, absolutely a, a strong area of focus. You know, your average enterprise, they you know, might not yeah. be looking for OpenStack. There stack. might be pockets. Yeah, but, but yeah. Over, internationally, uh, there's some pockets, but absolutely. Tom Joyce. Always a pleasure to catch up with you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next time. And we'll be back with lots more coverage here from theCUBE at KubeCon in Austin, Texas. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>